Uganda's president, Yaweri Museveni, has signed the LGBTQ bill into law, and the U.S. government has begun imposing sanctions. Uganda's president, Museveni, has signed one of the world's toughest anti-LGBTQ laws, which includes death penalty for aggravated homosexuality in defiance of Western condemnations and potential sanctions from aid donors. Same-sex relationships were already illegal in 30 South African countries, including Uganda. However, the new law takes a step further. The law stipulates capital punishment for serial offenders and transmission of a terminal illness like HIV AIDS through gay sex. It also decrees a 20-year sentence for promoting homosexuality. Uganda receives billions of dollars in foreign aid each year and could now face further sanctions. Homosexuality Act 2023 was assented to uh, by the president and uh, forwarded to uh, parliament. So what I have with me here is the assented to copy of the anti-homosexuality uh, law. To see Uganda's president defy the United States and other Western countries despite mounting pressure and the threat of sanctions is commendable. The law has drawn overwhelming support from the Ugandan people. Yet, the West, especially the United States, continues to call the law a violation of human rights, when in reality, human rights are constantly being violated by the government in the United States. If only the United States would mind its own business and stop policing other countries, or dictating to them how to govern their own country. This bill was supported by a bipartisan number of MPs. It was proposed by an opposition MP, but the government threw its weight behind it, consulted with him, and offered to harmonize it with the existing Ugandan law. So that is why most people support it. However, there's also condemnation from uh, human rights groups, from civil society organizations, and from the queer community in Uganda and across Africa that said this endangers their lives. And the debate itself was six, seven hours that uh, was sometimes homophobic, often using dangerous rhetoric. And I want to give you a slice of what MPs were talking about on the floor. A homosexualist is the one who protects, promotes, defends. So let it be life imprisonment. For whoever recruits our children, for whoever gets involved in making sure that our children are involved into this. These people should be castrated. <laughs> yes. So despite her being sexually human, she defends herself as a man. I find it very vague. To be clear, homosexuality is illegal in more than 30 of Africa's 55 nations, but this law in Uganda goes much further than any other law on the continent, probably anywhere in the world, and includes the new crime of aggravated homosexuality when it's with a child or somebody with a disability or in an altered state, and that attracts a, life, um, a death penalty. And it's unlikely that President Museveni wants to send to it because he's called homosexual people in the country deviants. Listen. The homosexuals are deviations from normal. The Western countries should stop wasting the time of humanity by trying to impose their practices on other peoples. In our country, we will have our morals, we will protect our children, and we are making this law, we are making this law for ourselves, we are making this law for our children, we are making this law for the children of our children. This country will stand firm. And once it passed, I can tell you, Madam Speaker, we are going to reinforce the law enforcement officers to make sure that homosexuals have no space in Uganda. One of the most common objections to the Christian position on homosexuality is that homosexuality can't be wrong if it doesn't harm anyone. Homosexuality is sin. Romans chapter one, for example, makes it very clear. So first and foremost, homosexual, homosexuality harms the person who engages in the practice. And number one, because it, in many ways, it dehumanizes them. The essence of our humanity is that we're created in the image of God and he creates us male and female, these two corresponding halves of humanity. Secondly, homosexuality is harmful because it harms the gospel. Marriage is a living, breathing picture of the relationship between Jesus Christ and his bride, the church. As you might expect, the United States condemned the law quickly. 
Uganda receives billions of dollars in foreign aid each year and could now face international sanctions. In a new statement that was released just minutes ago from President Biden, it says in part, this shameful act is the latest development in an alarming trend of human rights abuses and corruption in Uganda. The dangers posed by this democratic backsliding are a threat to everyone residing in Uganda, including U.S. government personnel. According to USA Today, Senator Ted Cruz of Texas called Uganda's law horrific and wrong. Senator Ted Cruz lashed out at a harsh anti-LGBTQ measure signed into law in Uganda on Monday that imposes the death penalty for what it describes as aggravated homosexuality and establishes lifetime prison sentences for anyone who engages in gay sex. This Uganda law is horrific and wrong, the Texas Republican posted on Twitter with an LGBTQ hashtag. Any law criminalizing homosexuality or imposing the death penalty for aggravated homosexuality is grotesque and an abomination. All civilized nations should join together in condemning this human rights abuse. At home, Cruz has spoken out against the landmark 2015 Supreme Court decision that legalized same-sex marriage. Yet Cruz, a former Solicitor General of Texas who argued cases before the Supreme Court, said last year that Texas should repeal a decades-old state law that criminalizes gay sex, according to the Dallas Morning News. Consenting adults should be able to do what they wish in their private sexual activity, and the government has no business in their bedrooms, a Cruz spokesman told the news. Unfortunately, the United States has condemned the law and begun sanctioning Uganda's lawmakers who backed the bill. The U.S. has revoked the visas of Uganda's Speaker of Parliament, Anita Among, with lawmaker Asuman Basalirwa saying she is the first victim of likely sanctions after Uganda's anti-gay law. The Speaker's visas have been cancelled for America the other day, and, and this, is, this is also confirmed. This is an email from U.S. Embassy. And uh, dear Madam Speaker, the United States government has revoked your current visas on information that came available after your last issuance. As of May 12, 2023, you don't possess a valid travel visa to the U.S., though you are welcome to apply again. Please forward your passport to the Embassy through Minister of Finance so that we can make necessary modifications to your visas. I think they were looking for my visa for the U.S., they did it fine. So the first victim is the, the speaker. The U.S. had threatened Uganda if the legislation came into force. This is very hypocritical, as the U.S. seems to currently have no problems with some of its allies, like Saudi Arabia, the UAE, and Qatar, who have even stricter gay laws. Many have accused the West of being bullies and not wanting Africans to make their own decisions based on what their societies want. The speaker's current visas have been canceled and this is confirmed in an email. Basalirwa, who moved the bill, said, The bill was passed in Parliament earlier this month, with only one MP opposing it, which showed that Parliament's role is to stand for and promote the interests of the people of Uganda. I now encourage the duty bearers under the law to execute the mandate bestowed upon them in the Anti-Homosexuality Act. The people of Uganda have spoken, and it is your duty now to enforce the law in a fair, steadfast, and firm manner the speaker wrote on Twitter. And Ugandan member of parliament, Asuman Balewara, said that they had no choice but to pass the anti-LGBTQ law. Balewara also read a letter to the media at the press briefing from the U.S. Embassy in Uganda's capital of Kampala, saying that he no longer possessed a valid travel visa to the U.S. We have no choice but to stand our ground. Otherwise, if we don't stand our ground, this is what is going to happen. Next time, they will bring another condition on our, on our laws. Don't pass this law. If you do so, then X, Y, and Z is likely to happen. So if we don't stand our ground as a country, as a people, as a community, then we will completely have seceded our sovereignty and independence as a country. As of May 12, 2023, you don't possess a valid travel visa to the US, though you are welcome to apply again. May I invite America, Canada, Britain, the entire European Union to also cancel the visas of Mr. Museveni. May I also invite them to cancel visas of all MPs except two, except two.
Let all MPs visas be cancelled. Let there be a travel ban, not only on Vasalirwa and Anita Mong, right honorable. Let all of us be subjected. In fact, let all Ugandans be denied visas to America, Canada, and, and, and the European Union. Moreover, the United States has moved to pause its medical aid to Uganda. I told you this was going to happen. I mean, you don't have to be a prophet to see this coming. The United States of America has postponed a meeting that was supposed to happen in Uganda. They're supposed to help them with HIV, AIDS, fighting, and I believe the budget for the year was $400 million. They told Uganda, we're gonna hold on, like we're not gonna go through with this meeting because why? You guessed it, because of the gay bill that you have just proposed. The US president's emergency plan for aid relief told Ugandan partners last week that a meeting was being postponed in light of the new law. The Uganda Country Operational Plan 2023 meeting was already set to happen. However, the U.S. State Department spokesperson said this is over the bill which was passed by the Uganda Parliament last month, setting out penalties including life imprisonment for anyone identifying as gay. We have to make sure that we make an example out of this country and Uganda is the one that did this. So they are going to face even much more than this because US even threatened Uganda with a sanction. Is anything like sanctions or some other concrete measure being considered by the US side if this law should take effect? Yeah, well, first of all, big if there, right? Uh, this is the parliament passing it. It still has some process to go here. Um, we're, uh, we're certainly watching this real closely and uh, we would have to take a look at whether or not there might be um, uh, repercussions that we would have to take per per perhaps in an economic uh, way uh, should this law actually get passed uh, and enacted. Um, and that would be really unfortunate because uh, so much of the economic assistance that we provide Uganda is health assistance and largely through PEPFAR. Uh, and uh, uh, you, you can see a world in which you know a law like this should it be enacted would not only, as, as Kareem rightly said, just be devastating to a whole community of people inside Uganda, but, uh, but if it were to have any kind of an effect uh, uh, on our economic assistance, that would only make that worse. So. Interestingly, major mainstream media outlets say nearly the same thing on this news, raising the question of whether they are all reading from the same script given to them by the government. Watch and then make your own decision. China's President Museveni has signed one of the world's toughest anti-LGBTQ laws. Same-sex relationships were already illegal in 30 South African countries, including Uganda. However, the new law takes a step further. Uganda's president is drawing international condemnation after signing one of the world's toughest anti-LGBTQ laws. Same-sex relations were already illegal in Uganda, but the new law goes much further. Ugandan President Yoweri Museveni has signed one of the world's toughest anti-LGBTQ laws. Same-sex relations were already illegal in Uganda, as in more than 30 African countries. But the new law goes much further. Sadly, a sovereign nation is punished for standing up for what is right. It would have been understandable if the United States had sanctioned other countries that made homosexuality illegal. Saudi Arabia's gay laws are far harsher than Uganda's, yet no Western countries have sanctioned them. It is evident that the U.S. is bullying smaller countries that depend on its aid. There's no hope, but where are we supposed to go? You don't want us in your country. You're not giving us jobs. You're not giving us education. You're not giving us medication. You are criminalizing people renting to us. Where do you want us to go? You are arresting us for literally doing nothing, for simply existing, you know? But where are we supposed to go? This is bad news. It's not just for queer Ugandans, but for queer people across the African continent. Ghana has been literally on it for months as well. You know, um, Tanzania, Nigeria, all of these other countries that I'm also not mentioning. It's just like they have been waiting for this. So we have this world, this system that is teaching us what to believe and what to think, what is right and what is wrong, what is true and what is false. And then we have the spiritual reality of the devil himself, the spiritual reality of demonic forces 
this spiritual reality that is influencing us and that is actively working against us that is actively working to keep us blind, actively working to keep us satisfied with the world and not aware of or desiring anything other than that. When the Western media and government speak out against the law, it appears the Ugandan government is on a witch hunt to punish people for identifying as LGBTQ or being who they are. However, President Museveni has maintained that the measure was enacted in response to Western provocation. What exactly does he mean by that? Listen to this gentleman describe how LGBTQ was being promoted to young children in schools and cartoons, similar to what is happening in the United States. The Anti-Homosexuality Act, uh, the Anti-Homosexuality or Same-Sex Relationships have been illegal in Uganda for quite some time under the old law. But this new law, of course, now criminalizes the act of homosexuality. And I would say that... Uh, Locally here, many Ugandans are excited about the president's decision, signing it into law, because it has been a big debate on the streets for religious leaders in churches, in mosques, and everywhere, even in parliament. Uh, people's representatives have been um, speaking loud and tough on, on, on homosexuality in Uganda because of the issues that had come up that was being promoted in schools, it was being promoted, you know, everywhere in, uh, by children in cartoons and all this uh, and that. But I would say on the global scene, well, it has attracted uh, heavy and heavy condemnation. We have seen the Speaker of Parliament lose uh, her U.S. visa uh, immediately after the president signed the law. And then we have also seen now the Global Fund threatening to pull uh, out of the HIV AIDS tuberculosis war. Uh, we have seen uh, PEPFA, the US president um, uh, program on HIV. We have also seen the UN AIDS condemn uh, this law. So on the international scene, it's a gross human right. But locally here in Uganda, people are excited uh, about the decision of President Museveni. If you're new to our channel, please subscribe, like, and leave a comment. They help get biblical truth to those in darkness. God bless you. While America has the right to give or withhold foreign aid to whomever it chooses, one can't help but wonder why America will willfully punish a sovereign country for making laws critical to protecting its citizens and preserving their moral values. As America focuses on imposing ungodly and sinful behaviors on other countries, it is losing respect from countries that once regarded it as the champion of freedom, and these countries are turning to China. How concerned is government about, you know, the, the pulling out? Because the White House had been threatening some economic, um, you know, uh, repercussions when it comes to this particular decision. So how concerned are those lawmakers in Parliament about this? There is a big concern. Uganda depends heavily on donor aid for its HIV AIDS programs. For its not just HIV, but we're talking about tuberculosis. We're talking about the number one killer, malaria. And all these funds uh, for, for, you know, for health, education, uh, and all that come from donors. And they come from the US. They come from the European uh, Union. But it's saying, you know, it's not, if it means uh, it's not going to give up on its morals because, you know, someone is threatening to pull out uh, of its HIV drugs. They are thinking, you know, you're the one taking away the drugs, but, you know, the people need them. But this is not our culture. So they are worried and they are mm -hmm. thinking, you know, why don't we look elsewhere? And they are thinking, why don't we think about move, uh, moving to China? Think about yeah. Russia, maybe think about the Middle East, which shares the same moral values like they do. Please pray for Uganda's president and the people of Uganda. They will face tough sanctions from the Western powers. We pray God strengthens them and that through their unwavering stance, other nations will stand up and reject the West's imposition of sexual immoralities on the rest of the world.